Rebel Galaxy Outlaw. I've been playing it for quite a while now, and I really wanted to jump in here and give you my thoughts and feelings on the game. The game is due out on the 13th of August on the Epic Store, yes I know, and the developers went ahead and gave me access early on so I could livestream it. Now let's get the important parts out of the way right up front here. Is Rebel Galaxy Outlaw any good? Well, yes, it's actually very, very good. There's a number of space games out there nowadays, quite a few in fact, and they all have their own tone and style. Rebel Galaxy Outlaw then has managed to find its own niche within the genre, and it's done an excellent job with doing this. Also, I will mention that I made my first impressions video on the game a while back, but I now feel I'm in a position to give a full idea of what the game is actually all about and what you can come to expect from it. Now, the game world is populated by 39 star systems, which you are free to explore as soon as you gain access to a jump drive. And you can obtain this after maybe an hour or less of gameplay. Now, once you do have the jump drive, Rebel Galaxy Outlaw is, to all intents and purposes, an open world game with an attached story and protagonist. You play as you know here, and, well, you're free to go where you want and do what you want. You can follow the story, which I'd highly recommend, as this is one of the ways you will unlock new equipment that you cannot otherwise obtain, and the story seems pretty good, at least up until where I've played so far. The story is also a good way to earn some cash here and there. It's important to stress then that the narrative is a vital part of Rebel Galaxy. You won't really want to completely ignore it, like you might choose in a game like, say, Skyrim, but that said, you can also dip in and out of it to your heart's content. Fancy some mercenary work? Well, you're free to do that. Want to do some trading or long-haul deliveries? Go right ahead. Piracy, mining and smuggling are all options here as well. The wonderful thing about the game is that you can choose your own playstyle and dig into that as much as you like. However, you aren't limited to just one playstyle. You can swap and switch between all of them as often as you want. In fact, there's a lot of areas that you can deep dive into with this. There are merchant and mercenary guilds as well, which you can pay a small fee to join, and once you're in, you will have access to specialist mission boards with higher paying missions for those particular chosen fields. Mining also works well, all you need is a resource scanner and a mining laser. Then head on into an area populated with asteroids, and you're effectively good to go. The types of resources you discover here will vary greatly. However, you can quite quickly make a decent amount of money. Do watch out for the pirates though, because sometimes they might want to take your cargo. It's just as well then that you can arm yourself here and put up a pretty good fight and keep yourself defended. So what you choose to do in the game then is just as important as how you play the game. Which brings me on to how the game handles and how it feels. Rebel Galaxy Outlaw is of course a space game, and it's a very, very good one. I've had a huge amount of fun in it so far, and I suspect I will continue to play it for a long while to come. Now, I want to convey some context here, however. Yes, Rebel Galaxy Outlaw is a space game, but it isn't really a space sim, at least not in the context of something like Elite Dangerous, for example. And to be fair, Rebel Galaxy Outlaw doesn't try to be that either. Now, Elite is an expansive sim, set in a fully realized one-to-one -one scaled representation of the Milky Way. You can control the finest details of your ships in Elite and work hard on refining your piloting skills. Elite requires a huge amount of patience and has a fairly steep learning curve, and just about everything in Elite takes huge amounts of time. Rebel Galaxy Outlaw isn't that. In fact, it's pretty much the opposite of that in nearly every way. Yet in doing this double damage, the developers have carved out an immensely fun and accessible title. Now, Rebel Galaxy isn't an arcade combat game in the sense of something like, say, Everspace. However, it does have space sim elements. The open world and multiple playstyles I've already mentioned, for example, are a good indicator of this. However, all these different components of the game are put together in a way that respects the player's time. This isn't a grind fest, and you won't be spending hours upon hours to achieve a single objective. Now don't get me wrong, that's not me throwing shade at Elite, as there's a time and place for that type of game style, and Elite really does have that. Rebel Galaxy Outlaw, on the other hand, wants you to experience the action more than the journey. Now here's some examples. Travelling across the game world is very, very quick. It's as simple as aiming your ship at a pre-generated bookmark in the case of missions, or going into the game, or going into the map rather, and creating your own bookmark. And once you've done that, you can aim your ship at these bookmarks, and press a key, and you'll autopilot straight to the destination. Fast travel, basically. Now, that might sound simplistic. Well, that's basically because it is. 
and it's no bad thing. It allows you to get to the fun and action immediately. You can of course manually fly to any destination if you so desire, and this is another option. In fact, Double Damage have really gone out of their way to make sure to give players plenty of options all throughout the game. Now, Combat is another example of this. You won't need tremendous piloting skills to become an accomplished fighter in Rebel Galaxy Outlaw. The flight system has a number of flight assists that will help you with this. Most prominent among these is the auto follow function. When in combat, choose a target, hold down the right mouse button and your ship will auto follow your target, and therefore allowing you to concentrate your firing of your weapons. Now that's not to say that combat isn't challenging, however, the NPCs have competent AI that will make short work of you if you stray into the wrong location or if you aren't paying attention. Again though, the flight assists are entirely optional. When you start a new game, you're presented with a number of difficulty modes. Normal mode is, as I described, whilst old school mode removes all the assist functions, so you can play how you see fit. However, you cannot change this setting once you begin a game. Talking of controls then, you can play with mouse and keyboard, gamepad or HOTUS. Now I've tried all three of these and I really do prefer the mouse and keyboard. Gamepad appears to be the recommended option however by the developers and a number of HOTUS setups are certainly supported. I have a Thrustmaster Warthog and it worked perfectly without me having to change any settings. I've heard some people have issues with some HOTUS setups however, but as I only have the Warthog, other HOTUSes are not something that I can test. Bottom line however, Double Damage have clearly put thought and effort into the control schemes here and I can't really fault anything in this regards. That said, when it comes to ship control, one of my biggest issues with the game is the lack of lateral and vertical thrust. For me, this is something that is essential in any space game. And whilst, as I already mentioned, Rebel Galaxy Outlaw isn't really a full-on space flight simulator, I do feel it suffers from not having full freedom in flying in this way. Now, this doesn't really impact combat, it does remove some of the sheer exhilaration that comes from flying ships, however. That said, the game does offer an inertial dampener inhibitor key, which goes some way to reducing the issues that might otherwise be caused by the uh, lack of lateral and vertical thrust. Now, sticking with the subject of ships for the moment, the game has nine different ships. These come in various shapes and sizes and serve various functions, however, you won't have access to all of them immediately, as some of them unlock whilst you actually play the game. The ships range from lightweight trash haulers to heavy trading ships and combat specific ships. These all have customised outfitting as you can purchase upgrades and offer old modules, whether that be shields, weapons, ECM modules or power plants or indeed many other things. Now any modules that you purchase transfer over to a new ship that you buy, however you can only own a single ship at a time. In Rebel Galaxy Outlaw it really isn't about owning fleets of ships after all. Now, customization of your ship also extends to the paint you apply, and Rebel Galaxy Outlaw has perhaps one of the best customization tools in any game ever. Now, I won't go into too much detail on this here, as I already have an entire video dedicated just to that specifically, so do go take a look at that. Also, owning an outfitting basis is also a thing further into the game where you'll be able to purchase an asteroid and upgrade it. One other thing I wanted to talk about are the visuals and the music, both of which I feel hit a sweet spot. The visuals kind of have a retro feel to them and are clearly influenced by games such as Wing Commander and Privateer. However, they have been brought up to date and this really does work very well. I'm a big fan of this art style and the explosions also deserve a special mention as they are quite spectacular. The music is also on an entirely different level. 400 tracks of music, 24 hours in total, spread across 7 in-game radio stations. The music fits in very well with the game's western theme. Think Firefly in terms of the game's world, by the way. Many of the tracks you'll have probably recognised, as they are all licensed tracks from established real-world artists. What's more is that Double Damage have gone the extra distance to license this music for live streaming. So if you're playing Rebel Galaxy Outlaw in a stream and have the game's soundtrack on, then you are fine with this. The game even has a special live streamers options that ensures that only the fully live streamable tracks are ready to play. All the others just won't play in that particular case. Now, that said, there are some issues with this. During my live stream, it worked very well with Twitch. However, on YouTube, it caused some problems with the automated detection system. Once Double Damage have provided a template message for content creators to dispute any claims, this honestly feels like an unnecessary step and an unfortunate one on that. The fault here really isn't with Double Damage, nor with the copyright holders. 
Both of them are totally fine with the music being used in this way. The issue is YouTube's automation of this process. My first live stream had 25 copyright claims attached to it just after it ended. And whilst I can easily dispute these, it feels like it's much better to simply disable all of Rebel Galaxy Outlaw's music when streaming, and that's exactly what I will be doing in the future. It's a real shame, as the music is absolutely fantastic. But that said, live streaming the game is only relevant to probably a very small number of players. Everyone else, for the, this really is a non issue. In either regards, as I said, the music is fantastic and certainly one of the many highlights of the game. Now, let's get on to a few downsides. As mentioned, the lack of lateral and vertical thrust are big issues for me. The menus also at times can feel a little clunky to navigate, which is something I mentioned in my first impressions video. The missions are also fun, but I have a feeling that eventually they will get a little repetitive. And this isn't down to the nature of the missions themselves, as I said, they're they really could, but rather down to the fact that you can do so many of them in a relatively little time span. The fast travel is great, the instant action is fantastic, but it really does highlight the repetition that is there in some areas of the game. The ship's HUD can also feel at times a little cluttered. And this isn't due to there being too much information, but rather because everything feels kind of oversized and a lot of it is of very similar colours. In my first live stream, I kind of missed a lot of obvious points, a number of people have kind of commented on that in the video, and I did get some assistance from chat however. But yeah, it kind of feels like some of that stuff is just not quite as obvious as perhaps it should be. Now that said, it really does depend on the ships, and some ships are much better here than others. Also, I found that the weapons linking is a little bit limited. In one example, I was flying a ship with four hardpoints. Three were outfitted with weapons, whilst the fourth had a mining laser on it. So I was out there minding my own business doing some mining when I come under attack. No worries, as I had a reasonably uh, combat efficient, combat effective ship. However, when it came to shooting, I couldn't separate my mining laser from the other weapons. Either all the hard points were linked together, which means I could shoot them all at the same time, and this included the mining laser, or alternatively, I could power a single hard point at a time. There seemed no way to choose which hard points I would like to link. Basically, I wanted to link the three weapons and disable the mining laser. And as far as I could see, at least, there was no way to actually do this. So then, what's my overall opinion on Rebel Galaxy Outlaw? Well, in many ways, it's the space game I've been missing since the days of Privateer, Freelancer, Frontier Elite 2, and all the other titles from that generation. It's a true old-school space game that is full of fun and has none of the crazy modern design themes such as time gates, grind walls, and stupid numbers of unlocks. The developers have put time into refining the gameplay itself, and this really does show. The game is extremely easy to pick up and play, and I found myself putting hours at a time into it when I only actually intended to take a quick look. The galaxy is lively, it has personality, and the mini-games such as Pool, Darts, Slot Machines and even the Retro Asteroids clone all add to this feeling of strong personality. In fact, I've put a whole lot of time into 8-Ball alone, which is very, very well put together. The characters are also nice in the game, although it comes down to the bartender, the NPCs that you meet on space stations, or even just the random chat that comes across in the ship communications. Talking to the ships, these are also nice. They aren't, of course, Star Citizen level of complexity, but they neither are trying to be nor need to be. And the missions are fun. The trading is easy to get into, as price lists are highlighted for all the locations that you have previously visited. I really could go on here, but the bottom line is that there's so much that Rebel Galaxy Outlaw does right, and very, very little that it does wrong. It's priced at £23, so even the price feels spot on. As I mentioned earlier, it's a one-year Epic Store exclusive on the PC, and yes, I've seen all the comments about that. The game will also be available on both the PlayStation 4 and Switch at a slightly later date. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.